Okay, so Genshin private servers. They are supposed to be like a once a month thing here, but like my computer's kind of been scuffed and I've been distracted playing Symphony of War instead of finishing that video about Symphony of War, which would have made a lot more sense like a month ago when I originally started making it. But yeah, back to back Genshin Impact private server videos here. Not the best look. Anyways, back to the main topic. Genshin Impact private servers. You love them, are wondering how to even access them, or you hate them and you're coming to my videos to threaten me on the behalf of an international multi-million company. Which by the way is a really weird choice of their time, but whatever, they can do what they want. Another month has passed and there's been some new developments. Not anything too flashy, but some great quality of life features that have made joining servers way easier. Like before, you had to launch a huge assortment of programs in the right order and make sure certain permissions were on your PC, and it was a huge mess for people less technologically illiterate. So let's go over this new launcher for Genshin Impact private servers, and also see the new progress of private server development. Quite a few breakthroughs have occurred in the past month including features that have been asked about since the conception of private servers. Also, there will be no footage of private servers in this video. My computer has been acting up in the past month, hence why there's been no videos in like 30 plus days. So the b-roll will just be Genshin Impact trailer footage. Before we can really appreciate the new Genshin Impact Grass Cutter private server launcher, we should really take a look back on how the dinosaurs evolved access to private servers. And by dinosaurs, I mean like me a couple months ago. So the process was really simple in reality, although some people still mess it up time to time and got the same errors over and over again and it really annoyed everybody in the Grasscutter Discord server. So here's my tutorial on how to host and join Genshin Impact private servers. If we traveled back to like a few months ago, and also skipped a lot of the steps, and also consider that this is not a good tutorial. So first you would open MongoDB to act as a server's database. MongoDB was basically the brain behind the server and it held all the information about the accounts in the server processes. Then you would recompile and set up the files for the server by typing gradlejar into the Windows console. I'm not a technical guy, I have no clue why, but I heard you need to recompile every time you wanted to launch your own private server. Now after everything's been recompiled, now launch the console again and tell Java to execute grasscutter.jar. This is your private server. Afterwards the server should start up, but you can't exactly access it yet. Now you have to launch Fiddler to redirect your internet traffic away from Hoyoverse into the private server. And after all of that, you can now finally launch Genshin Impact to play on your own private server. Just make sure you know what the actual Genshin Impact.exe is and not use the launcher that first appears in the file directory or as a shortcut on your desktop by default. And you had to do that every single time you wanted to launch and play on your own private server. It's a bit of an effort, isn't it? But it was all that we knew and had to deal with to play some bare bones Genshin Impact on non Hoyover servers. However, that all changed when the grass cutters got some grass clippers. And by everything changing, I mean it got a little more convenient. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't actually use Grass Clipper that much, so my knowledge on how it works is extremely rudimentary. So most of this information is from reading about Grass Clipper from the official Grass Cutter Discord and the Grass Clipper GitHub, rather than being from experience. From what I understand, it makes things way easier for people who want to join external private servers. Other people's private servers, not the ones that you host on your own machine. It basically removes all the steps for people joining these servers. They literally need to only launch Grass Clipper, admire the beautiful launcher art, I mean, can we just take time and appreciate the wonderful artist on the Grass Clipper team for this masterpiece? And then they just need to press play private. Assuming they had already done the initial setup with the server address and the proxy server, and also set up where the exe location is. And for people that host their own servers, the to-do list became extremely simple. First, MongoDB is launched for the database, then the server is recompiled because you need to do that for some reason, then launch Grass Clipper and press play. It's as easy as that. So the biggest breakthrough convenience was combining the proxy and the launcher all in one, and not making it extremely complicated to join servers not hosted by you. I'm gonna be honest here, it's been a long time and don't even remember how people joined servers back in the dark age. But wait, things can be even easier. So easy that complete brainless can now set up and join their own servers with complete and utter ease. It's all because of the new innovation with the new launcher. So now, time for the easiest Genshin Impact private server experience yet. The grass cutters now know how to cultivate. And I don't mean the genre of storytelling where the guy sits on a pill for a thousand years to get stronger. The new launcher, Cultivation, just makes everything so easy and clean and it's just really great. I'm not gonna lie, even I get filtered by the in-depth startup needed for grass cutters servers. Like why would I want to open up 3 programs to play Genshin Impact when I could just use 1exe to play Rune Factory? or XCOM, or Vampire Survivors, or Dead by Daylight. So the new cultivation launcher lowering the amount of programs needed to launch is perfect. First of all, just look how clean the new setup is. The added official art makes things just feel more professional. Although I do miss the old grass clipper art. There. So much better. But let's be honest here and stop memeing, the grass clipper art looks kind of ugly so I'm going to change up the theme again. Okay, so what's good about this new launcher? 
First of all, now everything is just so much easier and more accessible since you can now just grab all the files that you need from one place. You don't need to prowl the GitHub anymore to find new releases. Everything now can just be found inside the launcher. Also, for people just joining servers, they literally only need to launch Cultivator now and just put the IP for the server they want to join in and then they're good. For people hosting servers, they just need MongoDB for the database, they press the server icon to launch the server, and then they just press the launch button. Yeah, it's super easy now. All in all, Cultivator has made the whole process of playing on private servers like a billion times easier and has lowered the required technical literacy needed to play on private servers by a huge margin. Hey, maybe now people will stop making up and spreading dumb fake rumors about private servers around and actually play on them before talking about how they'll eat your computer or steal your Horioverse account. You know, actually having some semblance of knowledge in what you're talking about rather than making things up to scare people from some sort of agenda? Probably not though. And while the grass cutters did work really hard on making the cultivator launcher, they were also working on improvements to the grass cutter server scripting. And by that I mean the private servers now act more like official servers and can manage some spawning of enemies and even some quests. Yes, you heard me right, that one feature that people have been asking about over and over again. Quest. The answer can now finally be, yeah, some quests work, instead of, they don't work, with a tentative, yet, added to the end. But enemies actually spawning in the world is a huge step forward in making the private server experience feel more alive. Because, let's face it, as nice as it is to see the landmarks and cities of Teyavat, the lack of anything to do on the map, other than sightseeing, makes the world feel empty. Which kinda makes sense since the world is basically empty. A working abyss also adds some content to overcome and play with people through a multiplayer, or just a proving ground to test out broken weapons and artifacts that you modded into the game. Really, it's just nice that the abyss works as it's another way to enjoy private servers. There are still a lot of quests that still don't work 100% properly, but this is significant progress. I can still remember the first days of Grass Cutter being public, people were claiming that quests were not a possibility, but look where we are now. Grass Cutter is shaping up to be a really really good emulation of Genshin Impact servers. I mean, an emulation of a certain anime game. A true alternative experience to Hoyover servers. However, this might be an issue going forward. Well, an issue for the Grass Cutters, you know, the development team for private servers, and potentially me and other people that talk about Grass Cutter private servers as a public figure. But not you guys, you normal people are completely safe. While Cognosphere Terms of Service being broken is an issue, honestly, who cares? Since a breach of violation of any of the terms will result in immediate termination of your service. So a ban. This isn't even really a problem since these people can just play on private servers where the TOS does not apply and the ban doesn't exist. Also, Hoyoverse can't really track down anybody who uses private servers and can only really target Grasscutter team and people like me. Now, the real problem is potential legal issues with copyright protection. With Grasscutter becoming more and more of a better emulation of Genshin Impact, Cognosphere is within its rights to pull up Blizzard Entertainment and shut down the private server program. This is a real risk considered by the Grasscutter team since they did change their description from being a Genshin Impact server emulator into being an emulator of a certain anime game. Not to mention, this sort of thing has happened before. For example, Blizzard shut down the Nostalgia's classic World of Warcraft servers when they got too big, and Hoyoverse might do the same thing to any of the larger external private servers or the public GitHub project through Cognosphere. I mean, there are ways to get around these legal actions. If I learned anything from Victoria 3 modders, it was their keen avoidance of legal ramifications of modding a leaked prototype of a game that still hasn't gotten a release date yet. There will be plenty of places where the Grasscutter team could move if a takedown were to happen, but it will be at the cost of the great openness and visibility they currently benefit from. What I want to get at is that eventually this open and accessible private server era is getting closer and closer to ending. It's probable that it will become harder and harder to act as grass cutter as time goes on and if certain actions are taken. Although this potential feature could just be all for nothing since it is just server emulation. And emulation is completely legal. I'm honestly at a loss here. Like I'm just a dude. I really have no clue. We should however take time and appreciate this golden era of progress of emulation and development. And don't worry, I'll be back with more information about private servers. I'll keep doing this until I get my cease and desist order from Cognosphere, or they delete me from the internet.